This is a revision video covering the organic chemistry topic of alkane combustion from the second module in AQA A-level organic chemistry. As well as recapping some information that you should have learned as part of GCSE chemistry, we'll be looking at the action of catalytic converters in minimising atmospheric pollution. You should know from your GCSE chemistry studies that combustion means burning a fuel in oxygen. And one of the primary uses of alkanes, those saturated hydrocarbons, is burning them as fuels. Combustion can be complete or incomplete. Combustion is complete if it occurs in an excess of oxygen, and that means that it's going to produce carbon dioxide and water because all of the fuel is fully oxidised. However, if there's insufficient oxygen available, then incomplete combustion will take place, and then we could produce carbon monoxide or carbon particulates in addition to water. As part of GCSE, you should have been able to write balanced symbol equations for the complete combustion of alkanes. So pause the video and see if you can do this one. So this says an excess, and therefore we know that we're talking about complete combustion. So we're expecting to make carbon dioxide and water. So we can start off with an unbalanced equation like this, and then we look at the number of carbons in um, the octane, and therefore we can say there are going to be eight carbon dioxide molecules. Then likewise, we look at the number of hydrogens in, um, in the octane, and we can see that we're going to need nine water molecules because each one has two hydrogens in it, so that's 18 in total. Then we need to count out how much oxygen we're going to need. We've got a total of 25 oxygens on the right hand side, so therefore we'll need 12 and a half oxygen molecules on the left. Now here's a similar question, but it's a little bit trickier, and this is very, very common to see in A-level organic. We're not really doing anything new chemistry wise at this point. We already know how to balance an equation for combustion, but you're now being asked to use your new nomenclature knowledge from earlier in the course. So can you write a balanced symbol equation for the complete combustion of 2,2-dimethyl pentane? Now, you might have taken the time to fully draw out and work out what 2,2-dimethyl pentane looks like. But the first thing I'm going to do is think, well, if it's pentane, that's five carbons and then it's got two methyl groups on it. So that makes seven in total. And because I know it's an alkane, I know that its formula is going to be CnH2n plus two. So based on that, I can deduce that the formula for 2,2-dimethyl pentane is going to be C7H16. And I don't actually need to be able to visualise what it will look like. So that's still going to react with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water because this is complete combustion. So again, we can say we're going to have seven carbon dioxides, we're going to have eight waters. If I add up the oxygen in those, I get 22, and therefore I'll need 11 oxygen molecules. You also need to know about the atmospheric pollutants that are produced when hydrocarbon fuels are combusted. So there are various pollutants, and as you know, um, if we have complete combustion, we release carbon dioxide and water, and carbon dioxide leads to global warming. You already learned at GCSE that without greenhouse gases, the Earth would actually be uninhabitable because it's far too cold. Having greenhouse gases at small concentrations in the atmosphere maintains a temperature that is high enough for life to survive. You also would have learned that carbon dioxide, methane and water vapour were all examples of greenhouse gases. Sadly, we do need slightly more detail than this for A-level. So the first thing that we're going to say is that that upper layer of the atmosphere where we find these greenhouse gases is called the stratosphere. So here's my stratosphere, and in that blanket I've got carbon dioxide and methane and water vapour. As you know, short wavelength waves can penetrate through that stratosphere and reach the Earth. And then when they do, they warm up the Earth and then they're re-emitted as lower energy waves, usually with a slightly longer wavelength. So we're thinking infrared. And these are going to move up and they're going to interact with that stratosphere. Now, the bonds in the greenhouse gases are going to vibrate. And the reason that they're able to do this is that they're slightly polar. So, for instance, here in carbon dioxide, we've got a slightly positive carbon atom and then the more electronegative oxygen atoms are slightly negative. And this leads these bonds to start vibrating. So after this bond has been made to vibrate by absorbing infrared radiation, it then emits it again. And when it does so, it emits that radiation in all directions at once. So gradually, this is going to warm up the atmosphere and warm up the Earth. So can you give one reason why carbon dioxide absorbs infrared radiation? So as we just said, this is because the CO bonds are polar, or you might have described that they vibrate when they're exposed to infrared radiation. 
you should also be able to describe enthalpy as a reaction for combustion. So this here is the complete combustion of nonane, and as you can see, we have a negative enthalpy. And that tells me that the reaction is exothermic because it's giving out more energy than it's taking in. If we compare that to methane, we can see that we've got a smaller value or a less exothermic value. And this is because these smaller alkanes are less energy dense. If a hydrocarbon fuel is burnt in an excess of oxygen, then we produce carbon dioxide. But if there isn't sufficient oxygen, then we could produce carbon monoxide or carbon particulates. Carbon monoxide is a colourless, odourless, toxic gas, and it's incredibly dangerous because it irreversibly binds to the haemoglobin in your red blood cells. So essentially, if you breathe enough of it in, then you will end up suffocating. Carbon particulates and also other particulates made of unburned hydrocarbons cause a phenomenon called global dimming. This literally means that there are tiny particles in the atmosphere which are reflecting the sun's light back, so not as much sunlight is reaching the ground. And this is one reason why it's often a lot dimmer in big cities with poor air quality. Almost all fossil fuels and the products that are made from them contain small amounts of sulphur as impurities. So when you burn the fossil fuels or you burn the petrol or diesel that have been made from those fossil fuels, then you also burn the sulphur and make sulphur dioxide. And this is one of the contributing factors to acid rain, because as it dissolves in water in clouds, it produces sulfurous acid, which is an example of a weak acid. Acid rain is also caused by carbon dioxide dissolving in that water and also oxides of nitrogen, like nitrogen dioxide and nitrogen monoxide. These oxides of nitrogen are produced in combustion engines when the very, very high temperature allows unreactive nitrogen to react with oxygen from the atmosphere. These oxides of nitrogen contribute to acid rain, but they can also cause respiratory problems. And also at ground level, they react to form ozone. All modern vehicles now contain catalytic converters in order to reduce the harmful emissions coming from the exhaust pipe. Modern catalytic converters consist of a support or honeycomb structure made from ceramic, and this provides a wide surface area, which can then be sprayed or painted with a paste that contains tiny microparticles of metals like platinum or rhodium. These have a very high catalytic activity and allow the gases to be broken down into less harmful products. So within a typical catalytic converter, a platinum rhodium catalyst will be used to reduce nitrogen monoxide to make nitrogen gas and oxygen. And in the same catalytic converter, a platinum palladium catalyst oxidizes carbon monoxide to make carbon dioxide. Obviously, this isn't a particularly good thing for the environment, but it does make it safer for people living in cities. However, it's not just motor vehicles that produce emissions that are harmful to the atmosphere. Flue gases are produced from fossil fuel power stations as they're burning oil or coal in order to generate electricity. And just like the um, fuels for cars, they can also contain sulfur emissions and therefore produce sulfur dioxide. As we described earlier, sulfur dioxide will dissolve in clouds to form sulfurous acid and ultimately acid rain. In order to prevent this within the power station, calcium oxide or calcium carbonate are used to carry out an acid based reaction and remove that sulfur. So typically calcium carbonate would react with sulfur dioxide to produce calcium sulfite and also carbon monoxide. However, if additional oxygen is added, then we can make calcium sulfate and carbon dioxide. Alternatively, calcium oxide can react with sulfur dioxide and some oxygen to just make calcium sulfate without producing any carbon dioxide at all. These two reactions are possible because sulfur dioxide is an acidic gas and calcium oxide and calcium carbonate are both basic. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found this video useful in your A-level chemistry studies. If you did, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.